How's it going? It's Thursday. I heard the story yesterday. I read up on it yesterday. This is disgusting. And when will it end? I mean, I get that Trump, the word Trump has emotions behind it. There's emotional baggage when it comes to Trump. You got the pro-Trump, you got the anti-Trump. They all have extreme sides to those groups. The anti-Trump group, for some other reason, have lost their damn mind. The liberal group seeks to use constitutional interaction clause to block Trump from the 2024 ballots. Legal experts and liberal groups argued that a rarely used clause in the 14th Amendment of the Constitution could prevent former President Donald Trump from running from president due to his role on January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Controversy is expected to result in a series of lawsuits and appeals that could ultimately decide by the U.S. Supreme Court potentially impacting the 2024 primary seasons or season. Two prominent conservative law professors have recently published an article arguing that Trump should be barred from the ballot due to the clause of the 14th Amendment, adding credibility to the argument against his eligibility. The issue is that there's been two amnesty laws passed since this 14th Amendment took place, saying that you have to be charged with an insurrection and found guilty before you could be prevented from being on the ballot. The other way is through an impeachment to where the U.S. House does another impeachment. It goes to the Senate. He gets convicted in the Senate, and then they do another vote, which prevents him from holding office again. He's not been charged with insurrection or sedition. Liberal groups seek to use Constitution insurrection clause to block Trump from 24, 20, yeah, 2024 ballots. Keep in mind, this is from DBRN or DBRnews.com, written by Nicholas Ricardo, Associated Press. Maz, I didn't see the Associated Press, so it claims this is a censored group, so going with it. Pretty sure the See, does AP show up? I'm just curious if the AP shows up. More articles. I'm not seeing the AP. Oh, there we go. I might as well pull up the original source, the AP News. I mean, I get that they're left-leaning. Even Ground News says they're left-leaning, but if the original story came from AP. I'd rather read it from AP. He has former President Donald Trump dominates Republican president primary. Some liberal groups and legal experts contend that a rarely used clause of the Constitution prevents him being president after January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. The 14th Amendment bars from office anyone who took an oath to uphold the Constitution but engaged in the insurrection or rebellion against it. Growing number of legal scholars says the post-Civil War clause applies to Trump after his role in trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election, encouraging his backers to storm the U.S. Capitol, except he didn't do that. He says, go over there peacefully and make your voices heard. There's been many times that the Capitol has been stormed where people entered the chambers to prevent them making a vote. Two liberal nonprofit pledge court challenges should state election officers place Trump on the ballot despite those objections. The effort is likely to trigger a chain of lawsuits and appeals across several states, ultimately that will lead to the Supreme Court possibly missed of the 20. 24 primary season, the, the matter adds even more potential legal chaos to a nomination process that's already roiled by the front runner facing four criminal charges. I think about 94 criminal charges altogether. And they happen to 
be setting the trial, the start date, during primary season. Yeah, that's not political at all. Now Trump, very ability to run could be litigated as Republicans are scheduled to start choosing their nominees starting in Iowa caucus on January 15th. There's a very real prospect that these cases will be active during the primaries, said Gerald Malenko, a law professor of Indiana University, warning there could be a different outcome in different states before the Supreme Court makes a final decision. Imagine you have an opinion that says he's not eligible, and then there's another primary where he's on the ballot. Though most litigation is unlikely until to begin until October, when the states begin to set their ballots in the upcoming primary, the issue has gotten a boost from the recently released law review written by two prominent conservatives law professors, William Bade and Michael Paulson. They concluded that Trump must be barred from the ballot due to the clause of the third section of the 14th Amendment, except two amnesty, or two amnesty laws have been passed, saying you must be convicted must be charged and convicted, which kind of amends the 14th Amendment, Section 3 Clause. The section bars anyone from Congress, the military, and federal or state office if they previously took an oath to support the Constitution and have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Well, he's giving aid to Americans. He kind of did it. He didn't pardon any of them when he was in office. He could have. Instead, he initiated the investigation. I don't know how that's giving aid or comfort to the enemy when you initiate the investigation. In the article scheduled to be published in the University of Pennsylvania Law Review, Bob and Polson said that they believe the meaning is clear. Take the section. Three seriously mean excluding from present or future office of those who sought to subvert the lawful government authority under the Constitution in the aftermath of the 2020 election, they write. The issue came up during last week's Republican president debate in Milwaukee when former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson warned that there's something that could disqualify him under our rules and under the Constitution. In 2021, the nonprofit Free Speech for People sent letters to the top elected officials in all 50 states requesting Trump removal if he were to run again for the presidency. The group's legal director, Ron Fine, noted that after years of silence, officials are beginning to discuss the matter. The framers of the 14th Amendment learned that the bloody lesson, once an oath-breaking insurrection engages in the insurrection, they cannot be trusted to return to power, being said. Ahead of the 2022 midterms, the group sued to remove U.S. Rep. Mary Taylor Greene and then Rep. Madison Carthorn, both Republicans from the ballot, over their support for January 6th protests. The judge overseeing Green's case ruled in her favor while Catherine's case became moot after he was defeated in his primary. The complex legal issue were highlighted on Wednesday when the Arizona Republic reported that Secretary of State Adrian Fonte said his hands are tied because the ruling of the state, the high court, only Congress can disqualify someone on Arizona presidential ballot. Fonte's a Democrat calling the ruling dead flat dead flat wrong in the interview with the Republican oh, interview with the Republic, but said that he would abide by it. If Trump appears on the Arizona ballot, there's those who believe he's not qualified, can still sue in federal court to remove him. Other secretaries of states are wildly Navigating the legal minefield. It is definitely a minefield. Who's to say that there's not a protest that kind of turns a little violent in the future and a presidential hopeful is caught up? I mean, I know he, they didn't swear an oath, but let's say they use that to say an insurrection and prevent that person. What if it's a Democrat this time? What if it's Joe Blow that nobody knows yet? This is deading a president that I don't think is safe for the Republic of America. Our Constitution, or Repu our Republic Constitution, because we're a republic, not a democracy. And this is setting presidents 
that this could be used against anyone in the future. A radio interview earlier this week, Michigan Secretary of State Jacqueline Benson, a Democrat, said that there's valid legal arguments being made for keeping Trump off the ballot, and that's something that she's discussing with other secretaries of state, including those in the presidential battlegrounds. I mean, all they got to do is keep them off the ballot in the primaries or even the general election, and whoever the Democratic nominee automatically wins, unless people are going to write in Trump, which they still might, but they may just be disqualified because he's not on the ballot and he's barred from holding office. According to this legal theory that hasn't seen the day in court, Brad Rapsenberg, the Republican Secretary of State in Georgia, who withstood pressure from Trump when he sought to overturn the 2020 election in the state, suggested the issue should be up to the voters. Hear, hear. If people don't want Trump, put him on the ballot. They won't vote for him. They didn't vote for him to be president, allegedly. So there'd be no issue for him not to win this time if people don't want him. As Georgia Secretary of State, I've been very clear that the voters are smart and deserve the right to decide election, he said in an email statement. Trump argues that any efforts to prevent him from appearing on state ballot amounts to election interference, which is true. It's definitely election interference making it harder for people to cast a vote for Trump. In the same way that he's characterizing the criminal charges filed against him in New York, Atlanta, and federal prosecutors in Washington, D.C., and Florida, they could have just pushed the court date after the elections. It's that simple. They did not want to do election interference. They really believe that he broke the law. He will let the people decide his fate. If the people voted for him to be president, maybe the cases magically disappear. The Democrats take over the House and the Senate and they impeach him and convict him and remove him. If that's what the voters decide. <clears throat> I mean, I got my opinions. Let's just put it that way. And I think what's happening there has really been about backlash against it. Trump told conservative channel Newsmax, instead of New Hampshire Secretary of State office, was flooded with messages about the issue. And on Monday, said Anna Savan Savanek, a spokesperson earlier for the day, the conservative personality also falsely claimed that the state was about to strike Trump from the ballot. On Wednesday, a long-shot Republican presidential candidate, John Anthony Castro of Texas, filed a complaint in New Hampshire court contending that the 14th Amendment barred Trump from the state ballot. Contending. The event, I mean, the eventual bigger court challenger expected to draw greater legal firepower, but... Michael McConnell, a conservative law professor at Stanford University who's not a Trump supporter, said the case is no slam dunk. McConnell questioned whether the provision even applies to the presidency because none of the offices specifically listed in the 14th Amendment, which instead refers to elector of the president and vice president. He also said it's unclear whether January 6th attack constitutes as an insurrection under law or simply a less legal fraught incident such as a riot. But McConnell's also worried about the political president if Trump is ultimately removed from the state ballot. Hear, hear. It's not about Trump. Every election where someone says something supportive of a riot that interferes with the enforcement of law, their opponents are going to run, run in and try to get them disqualified, he said. It's exactly the same thing I'm saying. Ratfield in 18... 68, the 14th Amendment helped ensure civil rights for free slaves and eventually for all people in the United States, but also used to prevent former Confederate officers or officials from becoming members of Congress and taking over a government that they just rebelled against. The clause allowed Congress to lift the ban, which it did in 1872 with a political will to continue the bar from Confederate or continued the bar former Confederates dwindled. The provision was almost never used after that. In 1919, Congress refused to see the Socialists in Congress 
contending that he gave aid and comfort to the country enemies during World War I. Last year, the provision of first use. Since then, in New Mexico, Judge barred a rural county commission who had entered the capital January 6th from office under the clause. If the state bars Trump from running his re-election campaign is expected to sue, possibly taking the case directly to the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, if no state bans him, free speech for people would find <laughs> free speech for people and other nonprofits, citizens, and responsible for ethics in Washington will likely challenge his presence on the ballot. I got a feeling that these people are backed by Democrats, by actually people within the government that have a D next to your name. They know that they you're not going to do it personally, so they're using the scapegoat or a proxy so they won't get hit. Because no one wants to be the person that removes Trump from the ballot. You see Secretary of State saying we're looking into the details, but we, we don't know if, it, if we could do it. There may be a case, there's some legal arguments that sound, that seem like we can, but we don't know for sure. So they're going to use groups, give them a bunch of money, give them a lawyer, pay for everything for them to be the scapegoat to get them off the ballot. That's just my opinion. That's what it seems like. It seems like these are all fronts for the Democratic Party and the never Trump or Republicans, like the log cabin, Lincoln log cabins. It's critical that the high court settle this issue before the general election, said Edward Foley, a law professor of the Ohio State University. His fear is if Trump qualifications are not resolved and he wins, Democrat could try to block the ascension to the White House on January 6, triggering another Democratic crisis. Those pushing to vote the amendment agree and say that they think the case is clear, but it's not clear because it wasn't an insurrection. At best, it was a riot. This isn't a punishment like saying that the president needs to be 35 years old and natural born. This isn't a punishment. It's like saying the president needs to be 35 years old, natural born citizen, says Noah Book minded president of citizen for responsibility and ethics in Washington. You also need not to help an organization and uprising against the government. Like I said, this is going to be a dangerous president. It mentioned in here that laws were changed, that you need a conviction. I didn't say in here that you need a conviction, but according to another source I read earlier this morning, they change it to where a person has to be convicted before they will be removed or disqualified. Or they go through a impeachment process where the House sends it to the Senate and the Senate finds them guilty and then does another vote to disqualify him from the ballot. And the same thing could be said. Congress can get involved and say, we find that he is able to be on the ballot as well. So this really holds everything within the Congress and of course the Supreme Court. I honestly think this is another ploy to get, to make sure that we don't have Trump in office. This is their plan D or plan E because nothing else seems to be working. I think they figure if they charge them, support for them would be, would go away, but instead it's just emboldening them. The poll numbers are reflective of that. So now they're using proxy groups because they don't want their name associated. That's my opinion. That's not fact. That's just my opinion. But that being said, that is my video for today. Leave a comment down below if you have any opinions. With that being said, have yourself a wonderful day, morning, or evening.